Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Brent and welcome to part 6 of my tutorial series on creating multiplayer games. So in our previous tutorial, we left off in a situation like this where old clients knew about newly connected clients, but newly connected clients didn't have any uh, idea of what the game world looked like before they got there. Uh, so we need to have the server update newly connected clients with our current game world state. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. If you're interested, stick with me. So today we're going to start off in our index.js uh, server file and what we're going to do is create a new variable called players and we're going to make that equal to an empty array. Now down here we're going to create a new players object basically so function uh, players or player and then it is going to take in an id an x and a y coordinate and what we'll say is this dot id equals id this dot x equals x and this dot y equals y and so this is basically a container for all the information we're going to need to pass uh, to different clients their id and an x and a y coordinate so when a new player connects what we want to do is push that player to our players array so we're just going to say players dot push and we'll create a new player with the ID of socket.id and they're always going to start at the 0x, 0y axis. Um, when a player disconnects, we want to uh, pull them from the array or, or, or splice them from the array. So what we're going to do is say do a for loop for uh, var i equals 0, uh, i is less than players dot length and i plus plus. And then what we want to do is say if uh, players i dot id equals socket dot id of the disconnecting uh, user, then we found the index of where that player is stored in our players array. And then what we can do is just splice them uh, from the uh, players array. So players dot splice. Um, and it takes in the value or the index and how many we want to cut and we only want to cut them so we just splice one so there we go also when a player disconnects we want to let all other connected players in the world know that they disconnected so they can remove them from their hash map and stop rendering them right uh, so what we'll do here is we'll say socket dot broadcast dot emit and remember broadcast dot emit sends it to every other connected client other than the client that actually happened the or uh, initiated the event which in this case it was a disconnect event um, and we'll say uh, the event name is player uh, disconnected and then what we can do is send them data of the ID of the player that disconnected. So let's do ID and socket.id. Next, um, when the player actually connects, we want to send them all current connected players. Uh, so where is our current connected player stored inside of our players array? So we can do uh, on connection. It's sending them their socket ID. And right after that, it's also going to uh, emit them uh, the get players event. Um, and that event will send them the players array. Now we just have to access it uh, from the client. Okay, so let's go back to our multiplayer uh, demo uh, here. And what I want you to do is go ahead and copy the new player event because um, it's going to be similar. We're going to now uh, create or uh, respond to the player disconnect event that we just created on our server. So let's go ahead and rename this event a player uh, disconnected. I think that's right, wasn't it? Was it player disconnected or just player? Yeah, okay. So there we go. And then we are going to, the data that got sent to uh, the client is just an ID value of the player that disconnected. So we're gonna save that data inside of a JSON object called data and get the ID from that data object. And then what we want to do is just say uh, friendly players dot remove. And luckily, previously, we saved all of our hash maps by a key, and that key was the ID of connected players. So we can remove them by ID as well by just saying friendly players.remove by the ID. And there we go. 
So we have one more event we need to handle that we had already created on our server, and that's the get players event. So we're gonna reply or respond to that here. We're gonna say on um, and then uh, get players event, and then we'll execute a new emitter listener. And here we go. Now, this time we're not getting a JSON object back, we're getting a JSON array back, if you remember correctly. Um, so we'll say JSON array, and we'll call this objects equals, uh, and we'll typecast this to a JSON array, and args zero. The first element that we get sent is actually a JSON array. Now let's set up our try and catch blocks. Um, we'll catch json exceptions e and now we can put our logic inside the try uh, block so we want to create a new starship for every object inside of our json array so the logical thing to do will be a for loop for int i equals zero i is less than objects dot link oops i plus plus and the first thing we want to do is create a starship starship uh, co-op player equals new starship and in this case it'll be a friendly ship so what we want to do now is to set the position of our co-op player to the current position that player is in the game world that our server sent an x and y coordinate so what we want to do first is create a vector 2 called position equals new vector 2 um, and then we'll say position dot x equals and now what we want to do is make this uh, position dot x a float value but we can't get uh, a float value from a JSON object so we have to typecast it um, the reason we need a float value is because the uh, co-op player dot set position takes in float values not doubles uh, so we need to get a float value in position dot x so what we want to do is typecast uh, to a double the objects dot get adjacent object I dot get double and the double we're looking for is stored in the X uh, part of the object and then what we want to say is float value then we can do the same thing for the Y coordinate so instead of getting the, the the x value, we want to get the y value and set that there. And then what we'll do is say co-op player dot set position to position dot x and position dot y. And the reason again that we needed floats is because set position takes in float values. Now all we have to do is add our newly created co-op player to our hash map. So uh, friendly players dot put, um, and then we're gonna say objects dot get JSON object i dot get string, and then we'll put id in here, and then pass it the co-op player. There we go, now we can test it. So here we go, we got one game running and I'm launching another one now. Um, so we should see the, the new player uh, pop up here and we should also see both players in the newly connected client. Um, so here we go. We can see that the newly connected client also has uh, the data sent from the server about currently connected clients and it drew a new player here. Um, if I closed out the first player's um, uh, socket, then you can see that the player disconnects and is removed from the hash map uh, of the newly connected player. And so we totally did it. Two thumbs up. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Of course, we still got more to go, like uh, sending movement events to the server and having those uh, movement events relay to all connected clients. Um, so we'll probably do that in the next tutorial. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and post them below. I'm pretty good about getting back to everybody. Um, if you like the video, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button, but more importantly, please share it. Um, if you're feeling generous, check out my Patreon page. I give you two big thumbs up for that. Um, that would really help me out in continuing to make these videos for you guys. Um, so I appreciate everybody watching and I'll catch you guys next time.